Hi, I'm Julie Smith Centeno, and my son Christian has Pataki Lubsky syndrome. 24 years ago, when he was born, I, I knew there was something wrong. I didn't know what it was. It took three and a half, almost four years before I got an answer, and that answer came from Dr. Robert Stratton, the geneticist in San Antonio. And he sat me down. He told me that Christian had a duplication of chromosome 17 and that it was very rare and that there wasn't anything going on, didn't know uh, any research going on, uh, didn't know much about this duplication okay. and told me to wait. So I did. Almost six years later, finally, Dr. Jim Lubsky and Dr. Lorraine Pataki in Baylor College of Medicine in Houston were studying actually the opposite of duplication 17 and that is the Smith-McGinnis syndrome. So I talked with them a little bit and we brought Christian through the week-long study protocol. But what helped me the most in those early days when I first got the diagnosis is what Dr. Stratton said to me. When I asked him, what does this mean? What does it do? tell me what you know he did. So I'm going to tell you what he told me and I'm going to try to simplify it for you um, by giving you a little bit of an education in the anatomy of the brain uh, in some basic terms so that hopefully you'll understand uh, a little bit more about how this duplication might affect your child and um, maybe help with some of the questions that you've got. So I'm going to show you the brain Here is the brain. I hope you can see it. There you go. So the developing brain of, of an infant begins on the frontal. This is the front part of the brain. This is the back side of the brain. So as he told me, the cells of the brain migrate, meaning they mature, from the front to the back. The frontal part is the area where we have our uh, concentration, our ability to think, consequences, that sort of thing goes here. We have what's called the prefrontal cortex. This is the front here. It's this part back here that is responsible for our sensory uh, abilities and our motor abilities. So our ability to be able to move our arms and legs, have speech, is all in this area here. So when he told me that the duplication affects the migration of the cells of the cortex, which is this large part right here, and he wasn't sure at what rate the migration occurred. If some areas migrated, meaning they matured back faster in some areas than in other areas, that made perfect sense to me. Because these children have great delayed developments in the major areas of our ability to um, move, um, when do we potty train? When do we get up and walk? When are we uh, able to talk? When are we able to um, coordinate our movements? Now the coordination of the movements actually happens back here in the cerebellum. This is where we have um, the coordination of walking or dancing, uh, our muscle tone. It all happens back here in the cerebellum. Deep down in here is your brain stem. So this is where we have our uh, major control centers for our breathing, our heart rate, um, for eye reflexes tend to be deep up in here as well. Hearing happens right about here. Our vision happens back here. But it's this area right here that uh, got my attention when he said it affects the cells that migrate, the migration of the cells of the cortex, moving from the frontal area to the back. So this means that they have, these children have the ability to move, 
but they may have poor muscle tone because of this back here not being mature enough. And the ability to do something like potty training, if that particular migration stops here, then that child is going to be delayed in their ability to potty train or their ability to walk, which Christian was, was greatly uh, delayed in his development of not only those things, but also speech, the ability to form words and be able to get them out. So if this little part of the brain here is maturing faster, but this part of the brain here is not maturing as fast, so we've got this area that's slow, this area that's fast, this area may get up to the area that is responsible, let's just say, for our movement of our legs, yet this area is still delayed in our ability to get to the point of being able to speak. So again, when he told me that, it really helped me to understand. So the duplication affects this migration, which is giving me the answer as to why he's delayed in his movements and his speech and, and potty training and his coordination. Um, and it might affect hypersensitivity of his hearing, his vision, his sensory perception, which is all in here as well. The sensory perception, like understanding when it's too hot or when it's too cold, if he needs a sweater or if he needs to take off his sweater so he can sweat, um, his hypersensitivity of uh, things, and we call this tactile stimulation. So that affects all this area right here. So I hope that this little explanation helps you to understand what the duplication can do to your child and why the children are delayed with their abilities to do certain things, but that doesn't mean they won't be able to do them. You just need to give the brain time to get those cells to migrate, move back to the area where they're capable of doing these activities and then coordinating those activities and doing them well. So we don't know, and each child, as he told me, will demonstrate slightly differently. Some kids, they're speaking early, but they're not walking until later. Some are walking better, but not speaking until later. And it's just uh, the, the rate of that migration that at that time he was not sure of how fast or how slow and what controls that. All he knew was that area, chromosome 17, P11.2, one of its many functions is to affect the migration of the cell of the cortex. So this is the explanation that was so helpful for me when I was looking for an answer for, for Christian and what was going on with him because he was delayed and I didn't know if he was going to walk or if he was going to talk. I had hopes that he would and there was deep down inside of me that I knew he was going to do it. I just didn't know when. And that is one of the biggest questions that parents have these days is with the kids is, are they going to walk? Are they going to talk? What about their muscle tone? They have poor muscle tone. That's because of the effects of this duplication on the brain and the formation of the brain. I hope this was helpful for you. We certainly don't know everything about Patakulevsky syndrome, but as time goes on and with parent observation, we're learning more and more about it. It's difficult to know what happens as the child ages, Christian being one of the older ones. And we've got a few that are starting to get up into their 20s, and we've got a couple that are in their mid-20s already that we're looking at to see uh, how their life has been and what life is like as a young adult. And this is going to be exciting as we learn all of this. Please feel free to contact me on the website, www.patakilovskysyndrome.org. I'll be happy to take your questions. Uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to try to ease your mind or give you some education on what I know, direct you to those who do have more information than I might have, uh, direct you towards family members who will be happy to give you support as well.